Hey guys, just want to do a scope review here. I've got a couple of nice optics. Um, the first one is the new Burris Signature HD series uh, scope. This one's a 5 to 25 by 50 mil, 30 mil tube, second focal plane reticle. Uh, the other one is one I've had for a while. I've just never really put it through any paces. This is the Trigicon 10 mile, four to 24 by 50 mil. And it's also got a 30 mil tube, second focal plane reticle. Uh, the specs for weight on these scopes is right about the same, or real close anyhow. Uh, Burris claims 24 ounces on its optic. Trigicon, I think they claim 27. Uh, both of them, <clears throat> I didn't weigh them with the bear scopes, I weighed them with rings. Um, but I wouldn't dispute those claims at all. The Burris came in with these new Vortex Pro Series rings, uh, came in at 27 ounces. So 24 plus a few ounces for a set of rings, I believe that. Um, and the Trigicon is right at about two pounds uh, with a big set of Seekins precision rings. Um, but it's also got Tenebrae X caps, bubble level, so those add weight. But uh, so you figure 32 ounces. You know, take the caps away in the bubble. Uh, she's going to be sitting right there about the weight of the Burris. So real comparable optics. The mag ranges are real close, 5 to 25, 4 to 24. Um, the price points are quite different, though. This Burris is going to run about $700, you know, normal price. Uh, the Trigicon is right in that $1,200, little over $1,200. Um, I wanted to go with the MOA model, but I ended up going with the mill model because it was such a good price. I think I only, Midway had a clearance on them and I think I picked it up for eight and a quarter. So what I actually paid versus what the Trigicon's going for now, uh, what I paid for both of these scopes is also very similar. Uh, so I think it'll be a good comparison. Uh, one big difference, uh, made in Japan, made in China, both U.S. companies. So, I mean, I, you know, I try not to do too much purchasing of China products if I can help it, but, uh, you know, I had a bunch of Cabela's club points to burn up and I was looking for a decent scope. I didn't have $1,200 worth of points, so I ended up going with this Burris just to try it out, and I figured if I didn't like it, I'd take it back. Uh, and I'm going to kind of jump to the rear end of the story. This Burris is one hell of a scope, I'm not going to lie. Um, I've also got the bigger 34 mil tube Trigicon and the 4.5 to 30 by 56 mil objective which optically is phenomenal. Low light is out of this world. Um, this four to 24 optically is very good. Uh, I haven't put them in low light yet, but I'll tell you right now, this Burris being a $700 price point optic versus a 12 to $1,300 price point optic, the glass in this is every bit of this. Every bit. in daylight conditions you know like I said I haven't tested it in all lighting um, I haven't tested it in really bad weather um, but right now it's pretty sunny outside um, I just got done doing my optical tests putting them side by side I'll kind of show you what's going on out here but uh, you know I can look a long ways to the mountains and the hills and House is way over there. I've got more mountains over here. So, I mean, mountains all around me on the other side of the house. 
but it's sunny out, just got done raining. So the Mirage is pretty healthy. Um, both scopes handle it very well. Um, the Burris does have an edge on magnification. You'd think, well, 1x more. It seems more um, than that. I mean, things just seem more a lot more closer than just an extra 1x. Um, the reticle in this Burris, I do like better than the particular one I have in this Trigicon. The one I have in my other Trigicon, I think, is just as nice as this Burris. Um, but here in the Burris, I've got the... Show it to you. It's this Ballistics E3 MOA reticle. It's got that floating crosshair, and it's illuminated only in the center there, which... Uh, no bleeding of the illumination, it's super crisp. Um, great little reticle. Um, the center is nice and thin, but not too thin. Uh, it's thinner than the Trigicon, which is why I like it. I think I could aim more, I could aim, I, I know I could aim more precisely with this Burris at long range than I could this particular Trigicon scope. Um, and I'm kind of blown away by the optics at this price point and a Chinese optic. I really am. Uh, the clarity of this Burris is, I mean, put it up against anything. I mean, whatever. I mean, I've looked through some of the best scopes. I mean, this thing is, it's there. It's super crisp from five all the way to 25. It doesn't get dim on 25. It, it maintains that nice bright picture, razor sharp, crisp, all the way to the very edge um, on all powers. I don't get that tunneling. Um, they did a hell of a job on this scope. I'm not gonna lie. I was blown away for a $700 optic how nice this is. Um, versus my four and a half to 30, uh, boy, if it isn't the same, it's nipping right on the heels. That four and a half to 30 is pretty amazing, but you've also got a 34 mil tube and a 56 mil objective really sucking the light through there. Plus, you know, more magnification. Um, but I'll tell you what, this Burris is no slouch. Uh, I could talk a little bit about these rings on the scope if you like, uh, cause these, uh, Vortex, Pro series is what these are. Um, I hadn't seen them before. I don't know, maybe they've been out for a while, but <clears throat> I decided to give them a try because there's certain design aspects in rings that I look for. Um, and I noticed that the design on these basically mimicked Seekins, which is one of my favorites when it comes to a two piece. They're extremely rugged. Uh, very well made, you know, they use these Even in the 30 mil, you know, they usually used to only see these on 34 mil uh, or bigger rings. They use these big T25 head screws um, You've got dual fastening Big T25 head screws for your rail you know, I, I believe they're 840 threads, so they're big on all the screws. Uh, they've got a machined recoil lug, all one piece base. Well, and the Seekins go for about, uh, depending on ring size and where you buy them, I don't know, 120 to 140, we'll call it, per set. Now, and I also like the sleek design of the Seekins. So, Vortex, put out these Pro Series, well, they're using that big, fat T25 Torx head screws as well. They've got a nice, sleek design on the top. You know, nothing sticking way out too far. This, the same thing as Seekins, these big, fat T25 840 screws, machined recoil lug into the one-piece, all one-piece base. Um, so they pretty much copied Seekins. Um, I, I believe Seekins actually produces 
the Vortex Precision Rings, which cost about the same as Seekins. Um, and so I wouldn't be surprised if Seekins isn't actually making these as well. The big difference is Pro Series is a $60 set of rings. So you're half the price. And for the quality, I mean, the, the finish on them is nice. It's got a really grippy matte finish. You know, it's a lot grippier than most ring finishes. I'm impressed with them. These are a higher set, so they have the hole. Seekins does the same thing when they get the taller sets. They go, you get a hole in the bottom. Um, so, I mean, if you're looking for a good set of rings at a reasonable price, so far, I'm really impressed with these Vortex Pro Series rings. Uh, but back to the scopes, um, I'll go through some more of the features on these here, kind of comparing them. These are both illuminated reticles. Uh, they both have an off position in between each illumination level. Both really well, work really well. Um, if you can see it. So this guy, uh, it's kind of blurry in the camera, but the Trigicon is just a green dot center. Uh, the Burris is red. Sorry, I just can't focus very well, but I, trust me, there's no bleeding on these. Um, that looks like a dot, but it's actually that crosshair illuminated. Great illumination. Um, so the side focus on the Burris doesn't use numbers, which, whatever. All I care about is getting it in focus and getting rid of the parallax on the reticle. So, I mean, I know that this is, that I didn't look in the manual, I'd imagine that's 100 yards. And then it goes up from there. Uh, so I just shake my head around until I have no reticle movement. So that's fine by me. I had no issues focusing at any real long ranges and really dialing in a crisp picture, you know, just the same as with the Trigicon. Now the Trigicon here says 10 to 1,000 and then infinity. So if a, if a scope company is using numbers on their side parallax. I hate it when they tell you that bottom number for how close it'll focus, like I care, like I'm shooting this style of optic, like I'll ever shoot it at 10 or 15 yards. Like maybe setting up a, I don't know, a chronograph. Of course I use the, I just got a lab radar now, so I don't even need to do that. But uh, what I wanna know, if you're gonna use numbers on your side parallax, when these guys advertise this, I want to know that top number before the infinity. Because they always say 10, 15, 20 yards to infinity. Well, every scope goes to infinity. We all know that. I mean, that's, come on. And the reason I would like to know that is because I have had scopes where they had all these great wide focus ranges in the lower, closer yardages. And then they get real tight. They go to like 300 and then infinity. Well, the problem with that is you can really dial in your closer yardage targets for, you know, complete elimination of parallax and good uh, picture focus. But when you get way out there, you, this upper end is so touchy, it's really hard to dial it in and get rid of that parallax and get a nice crisp picture. Where like with Trigicon, when they go all the way up to a thousand and then infinity, and even a little past it seems, um, what that tells me, and I've found to be absolutely true, is you have a lot finer focus at those longer ranges. Honestly, I don't really care about the numbers. I'm not looking at that when I'm focusing in. I might throw them there to get them close. Um, but really, I'm dialing to get rid of the parallax. That's what I'm looking at the whole time through the scope. 
you know, the scope and rifle are stationary and I'm moving my head, making sure that reticle, that I got a good crisp picture and that reticle isn't moving on the target. So, I mean, numbers, cool, but, but that's what that numbers will tell you. You know, 500 to infinity is about a minimum for a long range scope in my mind. If you want fine focus at long range, Trigicon goes further with that. Um, <clears throat> both scopes have great turrets. These being nil, um, you know, they're not as crisp as the MOA turrets. The Trigicon with the MOA turrets uh, on my 4.5 to 30 has 25 MOA per revolution, and they're super crisp. These are nice and crisp. Everything lines up like it should. Uh, one thing that ticks me off on cheap scopes I've bought in the past is when, you know, the hash marks don't line up. So the Trigicon, I've got zero play whatsoever. I mean, click, click, zero play. Um, nice thing about the Trigicon, finger removable turret caps. So you hold this with one hand, remove that. The zero stop is super easy to set. Um, it's as simple as it gets. Set, unset, change it. I mean, it's literally like you just loosen the screw, drop the ring, spin it till it stops, tighten it, done. Uh, great zero stops on Trigicons. Now this Burris, another surprising thing in this price point. Um, so you got, this is the MOA, you've got lower turrets. Um, being, but they're push-pull lock, right? So, one thing I look at, yep, everything lines up. Nice and crisp, you know, it's not night force crisp. You know, not as crisp as my big Trigicon, which is, you know, every bit of a night force tactile level or, or even better. But they're nice and crisp, you know, I'd put them right on the spot with Leopold or, I mean, you know, the MOAs, you can hear better. I mean, they're right there, Vortex Viper. Any of you guys ever had a Vortex Viper? You know, uh, Nikon Monarch. You know, they're right there. But then the beauty is you can lock them too. So that's good for hunting when you're hiking. Um, not finger removable. Need a coin, a screwdriver, whatever you can fit in there. Now, I haven't taken this off to see how their zero stop works, but it does also have a zero stop, which in the $700 price range is pretty awesome. That's like, wow, good job, Burris. Um, provided it's not a nightmare to use like Night Force zero stops, <laughs> but it hasn't. Um, on the windage, you know, they did a good job. They count both directions. Uh, but they didn't put left and right, so kind of good, not good all the way. You got to look over here. All right is counterclockwise. Okay, so I got to dial it towards me. Um, but I don't dial wind a lot. Usually I, I'll hold wind with the reticle. Uh, Trigicon here. They did a cap. Uh, they do cap windages on their scopes, which is nice. I got these close together. Um, they make them lower profile and they cap them, but they say right and left. So there's no question with arrows even. Turn it down towards you. If you want to go left, turn it up. So definitely some better windage turret design on the Trigicon. Um, which I appreciate. But that push-pull lock is nice. Uh, it's, it's really good. Um, on these turrets, so locked in place, you can see there is a little bit of play in these. But that's just the fit of the cap. So on your cheap scopes, you'll get play, but it's actually like 
the squishiness and it's actually moving the reticle when you do this. I can tell this is just the fit of the cap and it's probably because they're push-pull lock, you know, they've got to have a little more clearance for that mechanism to work. They can't be super tight. Um, but that little play isn't moving the reticle at all, I can guarantee you. That's just like the actual mechanism is not moving. That's solid. I can even tweak on it pretty hard. I feel no movement on the reticle mechanism. It's just the fit, fitting of the cap. So great job, Burris. Um, tight reticles, solid adjustments, amazing glass, really is. Uh, so another bonus uh, we'll say you get with the Trigicon and that higher price point is they do come with Tenebraic scope caps. The Burris comes, and the Sunshade. Uh, the Burris does not come with anything. It doesn't come with the Sunshade, it doesn't come with caps. You just get, you know, the scope. Um, I don't use Sunshades that much, except for when I'm varmint hunting, but those are different scopes. Uh, any of you guys not familiar with Tenebraics? Um, the beauty of them is you can twist the whole thing to adjust your eye focus, your, your reticle focus on your ocular lens, but you can also leave it and adjust the position of the scope cap. And the nice thing about that is on a regular scope cap, you're moving that ocular lens if you want to flip it out of the way. Whereas like with the Tenebraics, if I go like this and I'm shooting, I can't see my turret, right? Well, okay. So what do I do? I don't want to change my ocular focus on the reticle. That'll mess me up. So the beauty of the Tenebraics, you see how i am got my finger there? I can move this scope cap in whatever direction I want without messing with my ocular focus. So now I can see my turret and my scope caps out of the way, but I didn't change my focus. So <clears throat> they're really nice. I don't know if any of you guys use Tenebraics. I started using them years ago and I won't have nothing else really. Uh, Vortex makes some decent ones for 20 bucks a piece but there's still no Tenebraics. Um, of course, Tenebraics aren't cheap. If you go to buy them on your own, they're give or take 120 bucks a set. So they're not cheap, but they're awesome. The front one screws into the objective and then it just kind of clicks around. See it clicking? So it's actually screwed in and then you can move it as well to get out of your way. Um, the other, it's kind of the two scopes in a nutshell. Um, honestly, I couldn't be happier with this Burris. I bought it at Cabela's because we have a Cabela's store here locally. I bought it online. Um, and the reason for that was, well, if this Chinese optic doesn't pan out to be much, I'll just take it to the store, no questions asked, return and be done with it. Well, <clears throat> I tell you right now, I'm not taking this scope back. It's excellent. It really is excellent. Many, many years ago, back before Burris was reinvented, um, I used the Signature Series, the, the old gloss metal scopes with the front object, uh, adjustable objectives. And they were great scopes back then. And then Burris kind of went downhill there for quite a while. and. I keep seeing all this new stuff they're coming out with and the tactical first focal planes, scopes. Uh, you know, I, I'm not, I don't range with my reticle, so I'm not a first focal plane guy. Um, I use the Leica Geovid3200.com binoculars right now. So, I mean, when I'm looking at something, bang, it gives me everything I need in one shot. Excellent glass in those Leica binoculars and then I just dial. And so, I mean, I'm sure, I know there's a ton of people out there like first focal plane. It's not for me. I also like the fact that my reticle stays nice and small so I can aim very precisely. It doesn't get big and fat. 
And when I have it cranked down on low power, I don't have this tiny little reticle that I can't hardly see. You know, this, so I like second focal plane. I don't like my reticle change in size. You know, if I wanna, if I wanna use it for ranging, then I'd set it to the power, like the Trigicon. That's why it has a box around 24. So that's true to range at 24 power. The Burris doesn't have an indicator, but I know uh, thumbing through the manual a little bit, it's 25 power um, is your true ranging on the reticle. So, but yeah, this Burris has been revamping itself and really coming up in the market. You know, I looked through some of the old XTR scopes and mushy turrets and not the best glass and they've revamped those a bunch. I haven't looked through the newer ones and then they come out with this Burr Signature HD and the, the, the old signatures were always one of my favorite and I said, well, I'll try it. And I'll tell you what, for a hunting scope, varmint scope, hell even PRS, uh, it's a heck of an optic. Uh, Burris does claim 65 MOA of elevation in this. I counted it verifying reticle movement from bottom stop to top stop. It actually has 71 in this particular scope, 71 MOA. They probably could have gotten more out of it, but they didn't reduce the windage. So you have claim is 65-65. And so you can't get a ton of elevation if you've got the same windage. Uh, you're just not going to do it. Where Trigicon, you're going to get a little over 100 MOA out of the top elevation, but they limit the windage. So, you know, they, they shorten the windage so that you can get more elevation. Um, Burris didn't do that, but 71 MOA on this scope, that's plenty for what I'll be doing with it. So no issues there. Anyhow, uh, tell me what you guys think. Um, I think if you're looking for a good scope in that, you know, mid price range, five to hundred to a thousand bucks, maybe even a little more if you got Martin Hale, give the Burris a look. Even if you're looking in that $1,200 price range, but you want a nice light optic, 24 ounces, with good magnification, good turrets, awesome glass and Burris does the forever no questions asked warranty just like Vortex and Athlon and whatnot. Trigicon is a lifetime as well but it's only limited warranty manufacturing defects so you know a big win there on Burris but uh anyhow thanks for watching guys I know it's a long video but I hope I kind of gave you all the information you could be looking for when it comes to deciding whether or not you want to try this scope out. Um, I think you'll be blown away at the quality for the price point in this optic. I mean, it really is a heck of a piece of glass. So thanks. Take care.